Hi everyone, in today's video we will be discussing about permeation in food packaging. You might be curious as to why there is a whole video based on this topic. Well, permeation is very important to many aspects of our life. Permeation is the measure of liquid, solid, or gas that are allowed through the material. Permeation takes place in our clothes, in sponges, and in soil. In our clothes, either wind is allowed through or not through the material. In sponges, water is absorbed to go through the porous material to help clean. Soil, water is allowed through so that water can go to the plants much easier. And many more examples. But most importantly, permeation occurs in our food packaging. Food packaging is what allows us for the consumer to purchase fresh foods. But before we get into permeation in food packaging, Let's backtrack a little bit. In 1748, the first permeation experiment was tested and observed by Abijuan Antonin Nolet. Nolet performed the permeation experiment by using a pig's bladder to secure the wine bottle shut and submerging it into a water container. He then noticed that the bladder securing the bottle was sticking out of the bottle. He then decided to cut the bladder open and when he does, the bottle releases pressurized liquid into the air. Nolet then performed the experiment in reverse and saw that the bladder was sticking inward the bottle. This experiment symbolizes how many materials go through permeation. In permeation food packaging, food must be packaged with the appropriate materials so that there is no gas or liquid transferred to the food for it to become spoiled. This will also decrease the food spoiled when purchasing or consuming. So how do we find out how much permeation occurs between each material? Fick's law can be used to find the amount of permeation in each material. In Fick's law, V dot represents the rate of the moving particles, P1 minus P2, is the change in pressure, A is the surface area, D is the diffusion constant and can also be known as the solubility in Henry's law divided by the square root of the molecular weight in Graham's law. T is the thickness of the material. After many years of research and using fixed logs to calculate for low permeation materials, it is found that metal, plastic, glass, and paper products can be used for the appropriate foods. It is known that metal packaging has the lowest permeation being the best for food storage in the matter that it does not allow or release any substance into the container. Glass containers are also a very great packaging material because it has very low permeation. It is perfect for foods that are very gas sensitive. Plastic can range from dense to not so dense. This will then give it permeation properties of lower to higher. Plastic has many derivatives that can be used for very specific situations in food packaging. Lastly, paper products are known to have high permeation, but they are typically used for dry foods and if paper is coated, it can be used for wet foods. When we discuss permeation in food packaging, it is ideal to want low properties, otherwise it will cause the food to oxidize. Two things can happen when your food oxidizes, one being that the food oxidation will cause the food to become stale if it's already cooked, or the second one, it can become the perfect environment for microbial organisms to begin to cultivate within the food. That means that you will be growing mold within the food. Permeation properties can also be affected by the interaction of food, additives, environment, or an excess exposure of air, water, and liquid to the food packaging material. To prevent high permeation, every packaging material is used for specific properties and is paired with the appropriate food properties. Otherwise, the permeation will become compromised. Permeation is an extremely important topic towards many aspects of our life, but even more so into what we consume. Permeation enables the sustainability of our food and must be at top conditions for food packaging. 